Hi everyone, Dan Groninger here again from GE Inspection Technologies with the second in the series of our instructional videos on Mentor Create. As you recall, the last uh, in the first installment of the series, we discussed how to get a copy of Create, how to get it installed on your system, and we went through uh, creating a simple app for the Mentor UT. And we left off with just having laid out the, the uh, basic panels of Mentor UT. As you recall, we called that Create UT Video. So I've opened Create and I scroll through my collection of apps and here I find Create UT Video. Uh, to make it a little easier to find, I can do sort by either name or most recent. If I say most recent, Create will organize things so that the uh, most recent apps that I've worked on are listed first. Just makes it a little bit easier to find uh, what I'm looking for. So we're going to double click on Create UT Video. And you see, remember these are the basic settings and comments and things that we set up before. Um, we'll just add a description here. configured our settings, set our acquisition state to free run, very important on a UT app. Um, we had largely ignored our conventional probe, um, but we'll talk about that in a subsequent video. We'll discuss uh, some of the strengths and weaknesses of the conventional channel and how to configure an app to work with the conventional channel. Uh, we set, made some basic settings in our phased array, and we created our two panels, a welcome panel and a simple view uh, with a couple of data views. So we'll just reorganize this a little bit, lay it out, uh, since we're only having our two simple views on the panel. We will lay those out just a little bit bigger and fill the screen. Okay, we don't need to fool with that too much, but uh, you get the idea. You can very easily edit all that you've done before. Um, couple of things that we did not discuss, I believe, in the first video. Uh, that is the undo and redo feature. So like many uh, word processing or CAD programs, if you don't like an action that you just took, there up in the upper right corner here, there are undo and redo buttons. So if I say undo, it undoes the uh, resizing and repositioning the actions that I just took. So the changes I just made, I can remove those actions or I can reapply them. Okay. You'll notice at the bottom of the each one of the data views, we have our menus. Uh, you know, by clicking on the menu buttons, I can open the menu. As we discussed before, if I select the entire menu, I can choose which items are included or not included on the menu when the, when the app runs on the instrument. If I select an individual control, I can lock that control. So that means it will appear on the menu on the instrument, but the operator will not be able to change it. And it'll have a little lock icon that shows uh, with it on the, the uh, control on the menu. So let's say we're going to lock our wedge velocity and we are going to hide our wedge angle. And we'll remember that in a few minutes when we come back and look at this running on the on the instrument itself. Okay. The disk, the little floppy disk icon in the upper right here is save. Uh, always important to save your work periodically as you're you're building your app. Uh, you wouldn't want something to happen and lose your work. So now let's say we're fi we're complete with this app. We're happy with the way it's laid out here. We want to go try it on the instrument. So once I've accomplished everything I want to do and edit, save it, click the build tab over here on the left, 
and you come to this panel. Now something very important to consider here are what you want your startup options to be on the instrument. So when we install the, the app on the instrument uh, and you select the app to run, the instrument will offer you or will offer the operator several choices of how to start that app. We can start from the beginning, in which case it loads the app, loads the initial settings that we've chosen, and starts on the first panel of the app. We can tell it to start from one of the panels in the app, maybe not the first one. So we had two panels in the app, one was called Welcome, the other called Simple View. And if I wanted, I could choose to have it start from the simple view panel rather than the beginning. We're going to leave that unchecked. The third option is to resume from the last panel opened. And what that does, the first time the app is run on the instrument, it'll start from the beginning. If you quit the app while running one of the later panels in the app, say we've looked at our welcome panel, we go to the simple view panel, we then close the, the app. If we choose to resume from the last panel open, the next time I start that app, it's going to pick up where I left off rather than from the first panel. So this is handy if you have an app uh, where you have some introductory material towards the beginning and you would like your inspectors to see that introductory material the first time they run the app, but in their everyday work they don't really need to see it, you might choose to say to offer them the option of resuming from the last panel open rather than start from the beginning. So if you just, if you only check resume, the first time you run it, it'll run from the first panel. Every time after that, it will run from whatever panel was running when it was last closed. Start from the beginning, you always start from the beginning. And whichever of these boxes are checked, and you can certainly check more than one, uh, the operator will be offered his choice of the available options when we start the app on the instrument. So we'll see that in a moment. Anyway, once we're happy with all of that, we click the Build button. Create says, where would you like me to put the resulting app? And I'm going to tell it my F drive, which is just happens to be the uh, USB memory stick on my instrument. And I get a little message here in the middle that says, application built successfully. So if I open my browser and I look on my F drive, I will find the new app that was just created, createutvideo.iwp. Uh, IWP is the extension for our apps files. Uh, one caution, do not rename these after they've been created. If you want to rename them, clone them in Create and rebuild the app with its new name. If you simply rename this file, it will get very confused when the app is installed on the instrument. Uh, these files, the app files, are compressed files that contain XML code for the, the app itself, along with all the videos, the PDFs, everything that you embedded in the app goes along with it. So it's, uh, there's a lot of information in that file that the instrument needs to unpack in a specific order. And if you just simply rename this file, it will confuse things. Now let's close Create for a moment, and we'll bring up our camera view, and I'm going to take the memory stick out of my computer, and I'm going to come over here to my mentor.